Do you want to have better conversations? Well, you're in the right place. First up, we have active listening. It's not just about hearing words, it's about understanding the message behind them. When you actively listen, you're fully engaged with the speaker, absorbing their words, their tone, their emotions. It's like tuning into a radio frequency where only their signal exists. But how do you show your listening? Verbal and nonverbal cues are your secret weapons here. Nodding your head, a simple mm-hmm, or a well-placed I see can work wonders. These are small affirmations that tell the speaker, I'm with you, keep going. And don't forget, interruptions are conversation killers. They're like roadblocks on the speaker's journey. So hold your questions, park your thoughts, and let the speaker finish. Active listening isn't just about being polite. It's about showing respect, building trust, and fostering understanding. It's about making the speaker feel valued and heard. So remember, active listening is about giving your undivided attention to the speaker. Next, let's talk about the art of asking open-ended questions. These are questions that cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. Make sure these tie into what the speaker is talking about. Imagine they are speaking about their trip to Japan. You could ask what is on the itinerary. Open-ended questions are giving the speaker an opportunity to further elaborate on their topic. If you change the topic on your ski trip to the Swiss Alps and how fun that was, that would be a poor example of active listening and having effective conversations. Consider the difference between asking, did you like the movie and what did you think about the movie? The first question invites a brief one word answer. The second, however, encourages a deeper dive. It nudges the other person to share their opinions, their thoughts, their emotions. In essence, open-ended questions are the lifeblood of a flowing conversation. They keep the dialogue dynamic, engaging and interesting. So remember, open-ended questions are your best friend in any conversation. Moving on, let's explore the role of empathy and nonverbal cues. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. It's like stepping into someone else's shoes for a moment. When we express empathy in conversation, we validate the other person's experience and emotions, making them feel seen and heard. We can express empathy by simply saying, I understand how you feel, or that sounds really tough. But empathy isn't just about what we say. It's also about how we say it and the nonverbal cues we give off. Our body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice can all communicate empathy. A nod of the head, a soft tone of voice, or maintaining eye contact can all signal that we are engaged and empathetic. Remember, in every conversation, your nonverbal cues are just as important as your words. Your body language and tone of voice can greatly impact how your message is received. Now, let's discuss the importance of being non judgmental and genuine. In any conversation, it's essential to keep an open mind and refrain from passing judgment. This doesn't mean you have to agree with everything said, but rather respect the other person's viewpoint, even if it differs from yours. It's about creating a safe space where ideas and thoughts can be freely exchanged without fear of criticism or dismissal. Now, on to authenticity. Genuine curiosity and sincerity can transform a mundane chat into a rich and engaging conversation. When we express genuine interest in someone else's thoughts and experiences, it encourages them to open up, fostering a deeper connection. And remember, being genuine also means being true to yourself. Don't try to pretend or put on a persona. People can sense when you're not being authentic and it can create a barrier in the conversation. Being open-minded and genuine can significantly improve your conversational skills. Finally, let's talk about the power of patience and self-reflection. Patience, my friends, is a virtue especially in conversation. It's all about allowing the conversation to unfold naturally without rushing or forcing it. Remember, not all silences are awkward. Sometimes they're necessary for thought and comprehension. Now, on to self-reflection. This is the secret ingredient to improving your conversational skills. After each conversation, take a moment to reflect. Think about what went well and what could have been better. Did you truly listen? Did you ask thoughtful questions? Did you show empathy and respect? Reflecting on these aspects can provide valuable insights for your future interactions. The beauty of conversation is that it's an art, not a science. There's always room for growth and improvement. It's a continuous journey, not a destination. Remember, practice makes perfect. 
Keep practicing these strategies and you'll see improvements in your conversations in no time.